Zimbabwe's security forces have been put on alert to quash any violence ahead of tomorrow's general election, in which President Robert Mugabe faced his toughest challenge in 28 years in power. So far, there hasn't been the widespread intimidation of opposition candidates seen in previous elections, but the two opposition presidential candidates have issued a joint statement expressing serious concerns about the way the elections are being conducted. Here's our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Miller. Crunch time for Captain Bob, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, who after 28 years at the helm, now looks intent on going down with his sinking ship, the wrecked nation of Zimbabwe. Once an icon of resistance to colonial rule, he remains defiant, branding the opposition damned devilish liars like their puppet masters. The president has declared tomorrow's election a vote against the British. Hey, hey, we are ready for a fight. And by Mangwana, it will be a good fight against the British. Yeah, so Mangwana deal them a final blow. Robert Mugabe blames Western sanctions for the precipitous state of his once prosperous nation. His opponents blame him. Tomorrow, he's expected to rig the polls again, stuffing ballot boxes in gerrymandered constituencies where the names of the dead haunt electoral rolls. Here, even the name of Ian Douglas Smith, the late leader of Rhodesia and Mugabe's erstwhile nemesis, remains on the list of registered voters. There is evidence to back all the allegations of fraud, but Mugabe's only let in observers from friendly neighboring countries. Most Western journalists are banned. Stakes high now. The national police chief advising the nation today, all defense and security forces on full alert from now on. Those who have been breathing fire about Kenyan style violence should be warned that violence is a poor substitute for intelligence. Army and police chiefs have already nailed their colors to the mast, saying they will not accept an opposition victory. The full weight of Mugabe's repressive state security apparatus now being brought to bear to ensure the embattled president stays in power. The reality is, though, he could lose, and one of the few recent polls says he will. In any normal democracy, it would be astonishing if the man on whose watch the economy crumbled were to be re-elected. In Mugabe's Zimbabwe, there are chronic shortages of everything. Life expectancies halved in 10 years. Inflation is now at 100,000%. Unemployment at 80%. A quarter of the population has fled. Many of those starving billionaires who've remained in Zimbabwe have hitched their fortunes to opposition leader Morgan Changarai. We have problems in Zimbabwe. We are tired of this regime. It has to go and go for good. Chinja, they chant, we want change, as they show Robert Mugabe the red card. These people believe that if their man loses tomorrow, it'll only be down to blatant electoral fraud. The opposition leader looking convincingly presidential these days. Why choose a man, he asks, who promised you independence but hasn't given you freedom? A man whose time has expired. It's time Mugabe went for a retirement package. This election, my friends, this election is a referendum on Mugabe's regime for the last 30 years. It is a test of what he has done for the last 30 years. He has not only destroyed what he inherited, he has gone further to destroy what he built. Now there is nothing for all of us. For the first time, Mugabe is facing a two-pronged assault, the second from one of his ex-finance ministers, Simba Makoni, variously described by his former boss as a prostitute, a frog and a traitor. Makoni has failed to entice the big gun defectors he'd hoped for, but his candidacy will damage Mugabe, not Changarai. Despite the dire shortages, President Robert Mugabe has performed a remarkable act of financial alchemy, printing enough useless money to buy a vast fleet of tractors, which critics claim have been allocated to loyal tribal chiefs, on condition they deliver loyal voters. 
Zimbabwe has never been so close to economic collapse and social implosion. Yet in three decades, neither has it come so close to the chinja, the change, that so many so clearly, so desperately want.